tanks are tough, but they might not be as indestructible as you think. Oh my God, it happened. Today, we brought in real active duty tank experts to break down what happens when tanks are pushed past their limits. Let's see the first clip. All right, tank on the street. Number one problem. <laughs> Okay, we got a dude hanging out of the top. Is that is that okay? Oh, he spun out! Oh! That's kind of what we call it, turret surfing. Oh, like, yeah? All the way up the top. We discourage against that. I was about to ask. Is this, okay, cool. That definitely looks like a safety concern. But speeding down a wet street might also be a safety concern. Do they not have great traction? Uh, you know, being a, a Russian style tank, they usually, our tanks have kind of rubber pads yeah. on the bottom of it, but theirs are generally straight metal. Is it all metal? And yeah, so it on looks a like surface it. surface <laughs> like that, he's gonna be cruising. I'm Colonel Tim Ferguson. I'm the commander of the 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment at Fort Irwin, California, and I've been tanking for about 25 years. Now, is the guy sticking out of the top, is he actually driving it, or is he just hanging no, out? No, so he'd be the tank commander, and he's responsible for everything that I that see. tank has going on, and uh, his driver is probably, you know, you can see where the long barrel of the gun yeah. tube is. His driver's sitting under that in what we call the hull. So you okay, got the hull right. and you got the turret. The yeah, driver's see. gonna do what the tank commander <laughs> yeah. tells him He's to do. He's probably like, no sir, I don't think we can do it. Yeah. So he might have been like, hold my beer, let's go do this and, uh, and see what happens. Tanks, they're big, they're heavy, but they've got a lot of power. Yeah. And when they get oh, going, yeah. they can get going. He's got several hundred, maybe a thousand horsepower in, yeah. that, in that vehicle. That tank's gonna probably run in about the 40 ton, 50 ton range. RM1s are up there in about the 60 to 70 ton range. Holy crap, so, it's gotta weigh more than my house. You gotta have that arm you gotta have that firepower and you gotta have that engine to push it along. So yeah. he's probably got something bad in his pants right now. Yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> Next clip. All right. Oh, we're going mudding. A little water crossing. Oh God, I hope his seals are good. Okay, the barrel is staying out. That driver is, uh, right now he's, he's, he's under, a, a, couple, under, he's yeah. a couple feet underwater. Uh, that doesn't look good, it's not moving anymore. No. And they look very confused. So either uh, all of his seals are working intact and all the water's staying outside or it's slowly trickling inside like you're sinking on a submarine. Hopefully for the first one, but you know. <laughs> My name is Staff Sergeant Mason Couture. I am a tank master gunner. Ideally, you would be able to do this, right? Mm -hmm. Like a tank's pretty much waterproof. Yeah, Everything well it's supposed is... to be able to for, you know, forward and get yeah. through obstacles and different right. type of terrain. So where is the intake on one of these? Does it have sort of like a snorkel setup? You know, your air is coming in generally over here, okay, and then it's cycling through, and then we have a you know a 1500 horsepower turbine engine in the tank, and it's it's kind of exhausting out here. Sure. So keep that water level about your skirts. These you cut, we call these the skirts on the side, help protect your your mm -hmm. track. Moving along sure. there, you should be okay. Look, if you're taking any vehicle into water, just make sure it can breathe, just like you need to breathe. It needs to breathe. Today's sponsor, Conflict of Nations, is a free online PvP strategy game that puts you in control of a real country in a real World War III setting. Fight with up to 128 players in real-time battles as you attack and defend with a variety of units like tanks, jets, nuclear submarines, and plenty more. Go to war with your neighbors and find friends to forge alliances with. The choice is all yours. Conflict of Nations lets you play with the same account on both PC and mobile. And if you click the link below right now, you'll get an exclusive gift to get the upper hand on the enemy. I'm talking 13,000 gold in one month of premium subscription for free. But strike fast because the offer is only good for 30 days. Download Conflict of Nations today. Just click the link below and you'll get 13,000 gold in one month of premium subscription for free for a limited time. Next clip. So there you can see okay, the driver. Yeah. That's where he sits. All right. All right, so looks like we got uh, Abrams. Yeah. Stuck in some mud. They're trying to get it out. Mud's just one of those things where you're just like, damn. Yeah. And uh, this monstrous vehicle can't make it through some mud. Dude, mud is brutal. It's one thing with a truck, but a tank, getting a tank stuck's crazy. Not only do I have to get out of this, but then I gotta go back and I gotta clean this. Uh, it is not, <laughs> That's a good point. It's not a that fun That stuff time. is gonna get caked in there. Uh -huh. What do you use to get a tank unstuck? Another tank? A good tanker is going to exhaust every effort before, to get out themselves. <laughs> before asking for any help. Uh, yeah. Because if you have to call our recovery crews or you have to ask your fellow yeah, tanker to You're gonna get a new you. nickname probably. Well, you're, and you're gonna probably owe them something. <laughs> right along the side, those are tow ropes. Oh, right here. Yeah, right there. Oh, cool. Yeah, I actually have two of them. One for your, uh, two for you, and two for your battle buddy. You can actually hook them up. Oh. And, uh, pull yourself out. Uh, have you ever got a tank stuck? Absolutely. I actually 
was in this, like this almost. Sounds it was in uh, Canada. Too. And we were at the point where uh, the vehicle just like starts to slowly sink. Oh. And it was my tank commander was like, hey, back up, back up, back <laughs> get up. Get out, get out. <laughs> the more experience your tank commander gets, the, he can notice uh, certain noises right. that just don't sound right. Mm. So he can stop. Usually uh, his tracks stop popping right. real loud. They're like, hey, uh, stop real quick and let's go check track. And these guys are just stuck playing in the mud. Yep. This next clip features a mistake you never want to make when working on the unique engine of the M1 Abrams tank. We've had to cut the turbine shaft. Well, that just sounds bad segment. already. See, that's the main turbine to compressor coupling. And I'm about to drop this little screw, that screw, down through the compressor. So you can all hear the terrible sound you never want to hear when working on turbine engines. Wow, beautiful. Sounds like a xylophone. Why does it make that noise? And there's a, a lot of fins to oh. pull down the engine. I mean, it's sort of like a, an airplane engine, right? That's essentially what it is. It's just compressed air mixed yeah. with fuel and then push yeah. that to, to the drive. So it turns the drive shaft, which in turn turns the sprocket and then that rotates the track. So the air goes in here. And it goes through what we call a pre-cleaner, which is a big you know, series of uh, vents and filters. And then it goes down through the pre-cleaner into what we call the V-packs, which are essentially large air filters. And then it goes into the air intake, which goes back this way. Mm -hmm. That's the whole engine, and then you have your actual transmission back here as well. It works well in all conditions. I think you know probably the biggest limitation on it, it, it consumes a lot of fuel. We also have a system that that will clean off the V packs themselves. We call it a pulse jet system. So if you ever watch a tank and it's just sitting there, and every now and then you see a little poof out the back, ah. that's the pulse jet pushing pushing some of that debris out of there. Well, I suppose it's not surprising, but it seems like they thought of everything. They really did. This is <laughs> it is an amazing design machine. I'll uh, keep an eye out for any farts out the back <laughs> moving forward. These next clips come from an event called the International War Games, where Russia and its allies compete against each other in a tank Olympics. And last year's competition was the war. First one on record. Let's see what happens. Hey, see, that's a cool shot. Yeah, until he cuts over. Oh no. Oh no. Looks like he's getting lost. Also, a great oh, oh my god, that crew is Holy crap. <laughs> we are getting beat to hell in yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, he's got like three inches of air, but that seems humongous when it's a tank. Hope you're wearing a helmet. Oh. <laughs> no harness, nothing. Nope. No seatbelts. Whoo! Not only do you have like your weapons and stuff in the track, but you got your like personal stuff. So that's not usually all the way strapped down. Projectiles. Yes. Is what that is. If I was a gunner in this situation, <laughs> you're gonna have your eye like actually in the sight. And if that driver hits anything or hits the brake, it's like getting smacked in the face. Oh. And so you can see each of the wheels that are driving the tread kind of individually articulating. Is there like actual suspension in there or do they just kind of float? You know, we use kind of what we call a torsion bar, which is these, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of long rods that go across the bottom. If you're actually looking at a tank, the, the wheels aren't perfectly aligned to each other on each side because they're set to the torsion bar. So they're actually kind of oh, staggered a little bit. And that twisting of the metal is what, you know, you'll see the, the wheels go up and down independently on their arms. And that's what kind of makes the tank ride very, very smooth. All that weight coming down at once. On. So you could break all your torsion bars, you could break your shocks, uh, road wheels could crack in half, your track could just come off. Well, that was a fun Olympics. Let's go to the next clip. All right. Looks like another tank course. Another guy what? flying and he's, oh my God, it happened. It actually happened. Someone has done it. I think they were just trying to do a cool skid, which turned into a bad stop. And, yeah. uh, and they're hurting in there right now. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Tumbling around oh, in yeah. just a metal coffin basically. Oh, yeah. We actually trained for like, if something were to happen like this in a okay. rollover situation, brace yourself. You can just see like when it digs in there, it, oh, yeah. it's just flipping and once that tonnage is going, it's yeah. just gonna keep on going. And with how heavy a tank is, I mean, could it do just damage to the turret and it's Absolutely. like rotating assembly? Absolutely, so I mean, as it makes impact with that ground. Yeah, it's just rocketing onto the roof. You could, you could literally almost knock that turret right off. The tank's gonna need some serious time in the motor pool. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of money no matter what. Right. Well, he almost made the full barrel roll, but uh, maybe he'll get it next time. Yeah. Take a look at the next clip. 
It's all right. Different kind of tank. This looks a lot older. This looks it's a little an old, older. Uh, an old Sherman tank from World War II. Yeah. I guess we got some reenactors, maybe. Sounds like it's misfiring. That's just a universal sign of, uh-oh! The Sherman was like the primary U.S. tank for World War II. Yeah. You know, that's a very historical tank, so I'm, I'm sure it takes a lot of work to kind of keep that operating. Yeah, it's a little Sherman, it just looked like it stopped. The engine's overheated. I know about overheating cars and vehicles with engines. So, I can understand this. So does it have sort of a traditional radiator? And if so, where does that thing live? Yes, it, it has kind of like the, the radiator function. It would be in that uh, kind of rear area behind mm -hmm. the, the turret there. There's radiators in the back right here. And then on top of that, there is an AC unit on the top to can pull, uh, cool all the computers down. Oh, it's not for you. No, it's not for us. Uh, <laughs> dang. <laughs> One point for the Humvees. They've got AC. <laughs> All right, we're loading up on the trailer. Getting a little wheelie going, right? Oh, here we go again. Oh, oh, we got a compilation this time. He went a little fast and he fell off the side. Well, the trailers just aren't wide enough for the tanks, guys. What are you doing? You know, as it starts to elevate, most of those drivers are in a position where they can't see right. anything in front of sure. them. So you can imagine this is 72 tons and it goes on to a train car or a thing. It's gonna make it bend and mm -hmm. all that. You're gonna feel it come on. Well, the way we load ours too, where he is standing, uh -huh. that's not where he yeah. would be because if something does go wrong, he's right. in the way of the tank. Even right? in an automotive shop, you don't yeah. stand directly in front of the car. No, ours would be up on kind of the, uh, you know, the, the part where the, the, the trailer meets up with the tractor. Sure. I mean, it looks like he got hit by the barrel. Look. Oh, oh, real close. <laughs> but I would say too that it looks like speed and it looks like maybe they weren't just a line. It's always tight, even ours. Yeah. I mean, it's on it's on our what we call our heavy equipment transporters. Yeah. It's kind of hanging over the side, but it it's designed yeah. to fit it. And probably just barely. I mean, it's got to be able yeah. to fit in a lane yeah. on the road. Sure. So, do you think the tank driver or the the person guiding is like going to be in trouble when he <laughs> gets back to base? And you're going to have to answer some very hard questions. And, yeah. Uh, and it's going to be an interesting conversation because it's probably going to start with, "So, see what happened was." <laughs> you hate to see it. Yeah. All right, let's look at the next clip. Fellas. Oh my god. Oh. He's just knocking them off? Oh. How do you miss a whole nother vehicle with at least six people on top of it? So you know how like in a car you have blind spots? Well, imagine you're every, this is what you could see and everything is a blind spot. Um, yeah, so where are like the, the areas of visibility? So for the driver and right, the Right, so the driver is really, operator. you know, kind of looking on kind of a, a an arc, uh -huh. uh, you know, off the front here, because he's got three vision blocks, so yeah. you can kind of see this front arc. That's his vision, right there. These little things right here. Imagine driving around LA like that. And then every crew member's got their responsibility, so the gunner, he's looking generally the direction of where yeah. the gun is pointing. If they're up out of the hatch, the loader has a sector of responsibility, and the tank yeah. commander has, a, has overall responsibility right. for everything. So whoever's in charge of that tank owes that crew an apology. How do you steer a tank? So it's like a motorcycle. And you kind of just, you know, if you want to go faster, you kind of throttle up. If you want to go slower, you just kind of let that throttle down. Interesting. And just turning it is you just turn it the direction yeah. you want to go. If you could ride a bike, you can you can drive a tank. Nice. All right. Well, I'll take you up on that sometime. Absolutely. We all know Hollywood loves the drama of tanks in a combat zone. Let's see if there's any truth to the scene. <laughs> okay. Can tanks go highway speeds? No. <laughs> All right, how fast are we going right now? So he's... And what, is he doing a rolling burnout? How are the... So he's driving a Mustang, it looks like. Yep. A, if he's doing like 70, 80 miles an hour, I'm, I'd be... Like that tank's probably not catching that. Yeah, there also isn't that much room in a tank. Oh, really? <laughs> I was about to say, the, the windshield looks a little big. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I hate it. <sighs> Superhero. Broke his back. <laughs> no, he didn't. That's Vin Diesel, yeah, dude. That's true. Vin Diesel. Oh, my God. A ridiculous scene. There's a lot to unpack there. Too much, even. <laughs> what is like a, a reasonable top speed for a modern tank? I'd say, you know, anywhere between 40, 50 miles an hour. Right. And that's um, hauling in a and tank. That's hauling. That is, that is hauling. Your track would uh, start 
expanding a little bit too far and like go off. I, I don't see him catching a sports car on a highway. Yeah, like that's just crazy. Plus, if once that tr that car was kind of under the track like that, yeah, it'd just, just get eaten, eaten up. up. It would not be pushing yeah, the like head. That, right. It would just go. Vroom. Yeah. I mean, it could certainly drag the car, no yeah. problem. That cable would snap. <laughs> Theoretically, if that cable didn't snap, it would probably bend this. Okay. And that's what it is. Buddy! Is this where it catches on the bridge and flips uh -huh. the thing? Yeah, that's not happening. Yeah, because right. It would just snap that chain, absolutely shell the car. Anything other than a car would have tank. just disappeared, yeah. and the, car, the tank would still keep rolling. That's <laughs> and then the jump, the catch. Yeah. Oh my god, that is so, so fast and furious. Even the scenes on the inside of the tank, how spacious it is. Yeah, it looked like they were in like and a the computer full screens room. and everything. If we were in a tank, we'd be like this. <laughs> this next clip shows a tank fail from before any of us were even born. Black and white. Going through a, a, a ditch. I mean, he could have drove around it, but I, guess, I assume this is for a test, and he rolled it. <laughs> <laughs> it's also like there's no trench 20 feet that way. And the driver's still going. Well, he's just like falling yeah. into the control. Yeah. So my guess is they're probably trying to practice, you know, getting across. Mm -hmm. It can get really dangerous, especially if it's like a deep fall and then goes right back up. If you're going any sort of quick speed, mm. like, 10 plus, it could really hurt you. I've never heard 10 being quick. 10 miles an hour and then you get quickly stopped with a whole bunch of metal around you, it might hurt. Yeah, for real. Maybe this is just part of the round find out phase. I don't know if I'd want to just flip it just to find out. I'd rather, you know, <laughs> kind of watch him do it. But. One thing I've noticed uh, as we look at the older tanks versus mm -hmm. the new tanks is it seems like they've gotten a little shorter, a little wider, mm -hmm. a little longer. So you've got a lower center of gravity. So mm -hmm. that, that would probably, uh, bode well for a newer tank, yep. right? Mm -hmm. A little tougher to flip. You know, the gun tubes aren't as long. You know, if I was in an Abrams today doing that, I would yeah. want to make sure that my gun tube, you know, I don't, I don't wand dart it. Yeah. Uh, and put it into the dirt. And like I've, I've, either, like that. I've either traversed it over to the rear, you know, like something like uh -huh. that, so I can, I can go in and come out. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, That's definitely so something not, good to keep in the old yeah, line. I'm not damaging my my weapon system, and yeah. I definitely want to be able to take it. Square. Yeah. Well, Colonel Tim Ferguson, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. A pleasure. Yeah. A lot of fun. Thank you for coming on, man. If you want to see even more experts break down viral clips, click here. We'll see you next time on Real Mechanic Stuff.